What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Pony Lawson and this is another edition of Tattoo Critiques. Once again, welcome back. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. You know I love you. But before we get started, if you could please hit that subscribe button as it does help out quite a bit. All right, let's get into this first one sent in by David Lowe. Now, David, you did send in a portrait tattoo a couple years ago, and if you guys would like to see what I said about that, you can check out this video right here. I gave you a couple tips on what you could do to improve your realism, and this time you sent over a completely different style, this neo-traditional-ish peony flower. In the first glance, I gotta say, I love this thing. The lines that you've got here are solid and bold. The color choices and saturation I think you did a great job on, but there's a couple things that I think you could do to really make this thing pop. The first one being adding a little bit of black shading to those back leaves, where they're sitting in the background. Right now these leaves just don't have a whole lot of separation, so adding a little bit of black to those two leaves in particular would really help out quite a bit. But again, the lines that you've got here are what's really holding this thing together, because they are crisp and beautiful. I do have one issue with this pedal on the left that's running behind that negative space bar. I wish that that was pushed out a bit further so it wasn't hidden behind that negative space because it gets a little confusing and you don't really know where that pedal ends. If you were to just push that outline a bit further, I think it would make this thing a lot more legible. You did mention in the email that you added this black shading in the background to tie these two tattoos together, but I do wish there were more variation in shading, like some darker areas and some lighter areas, and maybe even pushing this tattoo a bit closer to the older tattoo. It's kind of hard to judge with the picture that you sent in, but it feels like there's almost too big of a gap there. But as I said before, the color choices that you made in this tattoo are pretty solid. I think if we put this thing in black and gray, it would have some great contrast. So even though I can't really compare this tattoo to the other one you sent in a couple years ago, I do think you did a stellar job with this one, and I would definitely wear this one over the other. So thanks for the update, David, I'm happy to see you're still out there pushing your work. Thank you so much for sending that over. My random walk has referred me to your YouTube channel after you critiqued one of his tattoos and he recommended some work, but chance the same. I've been tattooing skin about nine months now. I learned a lot about the other areas which presented me challenges. My apprentice wine was many issues at the beginning, especially when it comes to getting the proper death. And I only used to feel like I began to go to the eyes and now pretty much lens with the other biggest challenge. I have tattoos when they will get the day, but they have the holidays missing ink. But I've fallen under the depth seeing heel pictures have definitely helped me in adjusting my techniques along the way, but obviously there's still a lot to learn since I'm in your tattooing on. I think it's always good my work. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a nice day. To all the commenters saying that they put me on slow speed, uh, I'm already at slow speed. <laughs> this is a struggle, okay? But basically what they said was, they want me to critique their tattoo. <laughs> no purpose on this ever fucking you know, void where fucking prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> So you did send over a couple tattoos that we're going to look at. This first one... Slow down. So you did send over a couple tattoos that we're going to take a peek at. This first one being Garfield. Now my first impressions are, this Garfield looks like a hot dog bun. I can't not see it. Well, it's a telephone thing. Oh. Well, I see the telephone now, but it still looks like a hot dog. My opinion remains. It's just the first thing my eyes go to. I didn't really connect the dots, I guess. Um, it's just that Garfield looked really weird. That being said, you did mention in your email that your lines could use some work, and I agree. They're not bad by any means, but you definitely need to control those a bit more. I see you attempted a couple different line weights, but I think the variation in line weights really need to be a lot stronger. They're just too close together. It almost looks like you used a seven and a nine, not really giving you that big of a difference. I probably would have went with a three or maybe five and then the nine. I almost think over time that these would appear identical. One other thing that I've got an issue with are the stars in the background. I wish that those were either skin tone or white and you had the shading on the outside because the stars just look a bit too dark. Personally, I would have outlined those stars with a three round liner and then packed some white in there just to make them bright and pop. The party dots in the background, I'm also not really a huge fan of. It just looks like chicken pox and chances are those white ones are gonna fade out anyway. To be honest, I probably would have just eliminated those altogether. It just seems like too big of an area to fill with that style. Generally, those party dots are used in more of a compact area. Like if you were to just do that in those hearts, I think it would have looked a lot better. I also think I would have stayed away from reds behind those stars in the background just because our eyes usually always go toward red first. So it doesn't really make sense to look at the background first over everything else. But you did send over another one, so let's check that out. This time you sent over a very colorful Mothman. At least I think that's Mothman. First thing I notice is you use the same exact reds around those stars in the background, and just like with the last tattoo, I probably would have picked a different color altogether. But I also see that you've got those party dots in the wing this time instead of the background, and I gotta say I like that much better. Although I do wish you used a bit more color in those areas, it's really not that bad. I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of the moon in the background as it almost looks unfinished and a bit oblong. There's not really anywhere you can go with the black shading that's around it, so I probably would have turned those into clouds or something else just to give it some nice shape. It just kind of feels like it was thrown in there as a last minute decision. 
One other thing, it just feels like you have these warm and cool colors competing with each other in this tattoo. You've got these reds and oranges in the antenna being the warm colors, and you've got these nice cool teals in the wings, so it just doesn't really feel that cohesive. There's just something that's bothering me when it comes to the colors, and I think that's what it is. But again, you've only been tattooing for nine months, so I can't expect this thing to be crazy. My suggestion would be to maybe work on those line variations a bit and study up on some color theory. Figure out which colors work well with each other and go from there. But thank you so much, Alex, for sending those over. Up next, we've got a couple tattoos sent in by Lauren, and Lauren said, uh, critique these nuts. Well, I'm not gonna critique your nuts, but I will talk about your tattoos. And this first one you sent over is this traditional lady head. And I gotta say, I really like this thing. There's a lot of strong features when it comes to this tattoo. The outlines, the color choices, and the saturation are all on point. One thing I will say about the color choices, when it comes to that leaf that's sitting on top of the bandana, it just kind of gets lost in there because it is the same color. So I'd be curious to see what it looks like if you were to take two of those leaves and turn it into brown and yellow rather than all green. Just to change it up a bit and not lose that leaf. But I am nitpicking because this thing is pretty great. One other thing I'm just not so super sure about are those white highlights in the hair. It does leave for a nice glare, but I almost would like to see that if it were just skin tone. If you just left some skin tone in that hair, I think it would have looked a lot more natural. I gotta say, I really love the traditional rose that you've got here. It doesn't look like you overcomplicated it. It's nice, simple, and clean. It gets the job done. So with that one, good job. Let's check out another one you sent in. Now with this one, I think there are some issues that we need to talk about, because this one doesn't look near as clean. When it comes to the black shading in the face and in the neck, it looks a bit scratchy. It doesn't look that evenly saturated. Speaking of black shading, I would have left out those shades in the snake's body entirely and let that red shine. I understand the concept of drop shadows, but this is a traditional tattoo overall, so I think it would have just looked a bit cleaner had those shades been left out altogether. It just dulls it down a bit too much for my personal taste. The shading in the cheeks just don't look very symmetrical, and the skin tone that you've got here just comes off a bit patchy. If I had to guess, I would say that these two tattoos were done by completely different artists because that first one looked so good. You did send over two other tattoos as well, and these things look great, so I'm really hoping that that Medusa tattoo is a bit older because you've got the skills it takes to make a solid tattoo. That's pretty clear. Just take your time, don't rush it, and apply what you know, and I think you're gonna do great. But thank you so much for sending those over. Also, your nuts were mediocre at best. As an artist, I like to use the best products available. And what do I use, you ask? Why, none other than Mad Rabbit, the cleanest in tattoo aftercare. So do yourself a favor and head on over to madrabbit.com and check out all they've got available. And be sure to use code PONY20 to save 20% off of your entire order. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, the next couple tattoos sent over are from Derek Webb. And Derek, you mentioned in the email that you've been tattooing for three years. The first one sent over is this cowgirl with uh, four eyes and a very piece together head. Five. Oh, fuck. I can't count. Now, the first thing I gotta say is I really like these party dots. This is exactly what I was referencing when I was talking about Alex's tattoos. The more compressed, the more contained they are, the more impact they have. Another thing I gotta say is I really like the color of these leaves. They're very bright and vivid and just catch your eye. But one thing I will say that I think you need to work on are these lines, because when we look at all these individual squares, they get a bit wonky, especially that one that's holding that left green eye. When you're gonna do multiple squares like this, you gotta make sure that your lines are perfect. One other thing that kind of caught my eye and I thought was a little weird is her right nostril. I really think that line needs to be flipped around and make it look like the outside of the nostril rather than the inside. I mean, this is a very unique design and the colors are great. I just think your outlines are your downfall here. And again, since the outlines are the foundation for these kinds of tattoos, you gotta nail them. But you did send in one more, so let's see how you did on that one. And here we've got another bright and colorful tattoo, this crazy looking anglerfish. Another cool design, again, great with the colors, but where I think it falls off are those outlines, yet again, especially when it comes to those front teeth. They just come off a bit weak. I wish they were a hair thicker, just to kind of draw our eye over in that direction. And that's pretty common with a lot of artists. The smaller lines you use, you tend to lose a bit of control. And that seems to be your kryptonite, so maybe adjust your designs accordingly. Because you can tell when you look at that curvy line going around the mouth, you've got good control. You just kind of lose it a bit when it comes to those smaller outlines. And there's nothing stopping you from going back into those teeth and bumping those outlines up a bit. When it comes to the orange outlines around the glow, I personally think you could have spaced those out a bit more just for longevity's sake. I do worry that they may blur together in the future. Again, I think those party dots are pretty cool. They look pretty great, especially in a fish design. It almost adds an iridescent scale type feel. So to reiterate, I think you've got some really cool designs and your strengths lie with your solid saturation and control of those thicker outlines. I think you just need to work on those thinner outlines or adjust your designs altogether to better fit those strengths. But keep up the great work, Derek, and thank you so much for sending those in. All right, the next tattoo sent over is from China. And China, you mentioned in your email that you've been tattooing for about four years. And you sent over this splendid Golden Girls tattoo. I gotta say, solid subject matter and great composition. 
And the way he pulled these off is pretty fantastic, because that really looks like a young Betty White. And you can clearly tell the personality in Sophia, even if you've never seen Golden Girls. I do wish there were a bit more detail when it comes to Sophia's hair. It comes off as a bit painterly, and if that's what you're going for, then great job. However, I do know a lot of artists struggle when it comes to realism, and even if they're trying to pull off hyper-realism, it ends up falling in that painterly area. But if not, then I think adding some darker, crisper shades in both of their hair is gonna help push it more into the realm of realism. Initially, I thought these lines could have been a bit wonky, but maybe that was the shape of the client's body. However, if we look at the bottom of Rose's picture and the top of Sophia's, those lines are almost touching, and the gap between the two just widens as it goes left, making me feel like those lines really do curve. So for me, I would have tightened that up a bit or maybe changed those outlines after the stencil's already on there. Because I know once you put the stencil on there, a lot of times the shape of the body can really curve lines. So you have to make those last minute adjustments to make sure everything looks nice and crisp. But overall, I love this thing. I think it's got some really good character. And it shows some excellent skill and techniques. Rose has a nice warmth to her and Sophia just looks funny, which fits her character. So great job, China. I think you did an exceptional job on these two. And I appreciate you so much for sending that over. RIP, Betty. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the critiques, but I do want to give praise to the artist who I think did the best. And there were a few good tattoos that I saw on this episode. So if I had to break it down to technical application alone, I gotta give it to David Lowe. And that just goes to show you that you don't have to have a crazy ornate design to pull a solid tattoo. This thing's got bold lines and solid saturation. This thing is gonna last forever. And I know not everyone's going to agree with me, but personally, I think it all boils down to the foundations of tattooing and longevity. And again, there were a few other tattoos that were sent in that were great tattoos, but if we compared those to this one, 10 years down the road, this one's hardly gonna change. So David, I'm glad to see you're still putting in work and trying to get better. Keep it up and congratulations once again on being my favorite this week. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of the series and that's shining a spotlight on somebody who I think you should all be following. And that's Shalev Sar out of Tel Aviv. We've seen a lot of variations in styles this week and when you look at Shalev's portfolio, you also see those same variations. She's definitely not a one trick pony. Her designs span from realism to pop art and everything in between. And she's honestly insanely good at all of them. And in fact, sometimes she just blends them all together. And for some reason, it just works. And I gotta be honest, this 90s MTV tattoo just won me over. Um, super jealous this isn't on me. So if you're looking for inspiration on how to change up your style, head on over to her page, give her a follow, and let her know I sent ya. All right, that's gonna be it. I'm not gonna keep you guys any longer, but remember, if you'd like to see your work critiqued here, you can do so by sending it to ponycritiques at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see you guys next week.